I'm a woman, thanks God. A Muslim, an Egyptian scientist, and I just moved from Italy to Jordan to work in an international research center called SESAMI. SESAMI aims to motivate scientific excellence in the Middle East as it aims to bridge the gaps between people living in this politically conflicting region. So I'm here to let you know about these two aspects of the project. Sesame Project all comes from a scientific fascination with light. For thousands of years, understanding of our universe remained restricted with what we were able to see with our eyes, and later with what we were able to see with tools such as microscopes. Hundreds of mysteries were revealed, yet seeing the invisible was and still is not an easy task. To see more is our inspiration to explore and to develop, and is our way to live and to survive. This motivated scientists to develop and construct super microscopes known as accelerators. Those have different shapes, forms, and technologies, aiming at spotting matter down to its atoms. The one I'm working on is called synchrotron light source. The technology has potential applications in life and material science, physics, chemistry, biology, and many others. It's so beautiful to see beyond the hidden unknowns, to answer so many questions about what lies inside us and around us, to view the past, the present, and to preview the, the future, and most importantly, to break a rule. So besides science, and inspired by CERN, Sesame also aims to connect people living in a boiling spot. Just imagine, to bring you closer, Arabic, Israeli, Iranians, Pakistani, and Turkish people sitting at the same table, not to negotiate about politics, borders, or peace treaties, but instead to talk about scientific collaborations. Annual meetings bring together scientists of the Middle East, together with experts in one place. They simply think science, and when science talks, they listen. They may still be sitting as labeled groups, each representing a country, but at least for a few hours, they are looking at the same direction to the same speaker, regardless of the political situation outside the conference room, regardless of the nationality or the religion of the speaker, exactly as we are doing now. In their own way, they are creating a certain kind of peace. You can find it outside. And this happens one meeting in a year and one step at a time. I got to see this during my first visit to Sesame in 2005 annual meeting. Like anyone else who knows very well the volcanic nature of that part of the planet Earth, best known as the Middle East, I had my doubts. It was an adventure. It didn't mean just a scientific conference. It meant something different. It was a usual scene to see participants from the Middle East gathering and chatting with experts in coffee breaks. The science presented during the meeting was impressive. But honestly, being in one place with those supposedly conflicting groups of people was adding something so much bigger, was adding a challenge. By the end of that meeting, I decided that I have to be a part of this community. And I did after 10 years. 2012, I represented Egypt in Sesame Executive Committee. And earlier this year, an infrared beam line scientist at Sesame job was announced. Even with my huge interest in the project, it took me three weeks of thinking to apply or not to apply, and that was the question. Because to attend a meeting is so much different than taking on a position. To accept, it means you'll have to burn all the labels, nationality, religion, culture, and gender. And what you might do freely will now become essential, an obligation. I finally applied, and I was selected for the job that I began only a couple of months ago. As it represents a new challenge in my scientific career, 
in which I hope to help break through science borders, it also shapes my personal interest in breaking other kinds of borders, borders defined by labels. Working at Sesame means to drop your personal views. I had a habit to take the flag of Egypt wherever I go. On my way to Sesame, I broke that rule and I left it home because I know that in Sesame, my flag will be a label. Upon traveling to Italy to work on my PhD, one colleague asked me, what is the religion of your Italian supervisor? And I answered, why should I care about his religion if my PhD is in physics? And returning with a PhD in biophysics, I was asked, to whom do you belong now? To the physicist or the biologist? And my answer was, to the corridor leading to both. That's a funny situation, but it also gives you an image of how people keep creating borders and adding rules. There is one more label I carry. I'm a woman. Being the only female scientist at Sesame so far puts a pressure every day and a challenge to prove, yes, Arabic women can do this. To be a Muslim Arabic woman working in the field of science and technology is not convincing for many. The field is already difficult, and it was difficult enough in Italy. But by adding an Arabic country with a particular picture of a female scientist wearing a jeans, a veil, putting a helmet, doing experiments, handling tools, sometimes you notice something like laughs and winks. So, Seriously, are you able to do this? The answer is yes. I can also change the tires. So to be a movie star, you just have to be an Arabic woman scientist. You only have to try to move a heavy object or try to fill the Dewar with liquid nitrogen, and you'll find all the eyes are looking at you, not because you are beautiful, but because they are worried. So they start. Oh, should we call the ambulance? Should we run? Is she going to die? It's true that women Arabic scientists are restricted either by their society or family traditions. I was lucky, but my situation is not that common. Others cannot travel abroad, or at least only to an, Ar to an Arabic country. Sesame opens the door for these people to maintain ambition tradition in one pocket. It will allow them to, to break a rule that people keep putting for them. They will show the world and the people they are not only women. They are Arabic women scientists and good scientists. People tend to label each other, maybe to have a reason to trust and consequently to feel secure. But I think labeling is toxic because it keeps dividing us. But science, with its rationality, can level up our beliefs and our views. It will for sure lead us somewhere healthier, agreeable, and rewarding. For us to survive as human, as species, and to tackle problems such as climate change, diseases, and all other kinds of threats. We need to overcome our differences. We need to keep breaking borders and to keep breaking rules. We need a light, a certain kind of light that has nothing to do with infrared or X-rays or accelerators. We need to believe that a dream becomes reality is not just a slogan. It's a possible experiment and a possible human achievement. Science, with its pure logic, can unify nationalities, religions, cultures, and genders. Because in science, one plus one equals two, and never zero. Thank you. <laughs>